Hi guys and welcome back to episode 11 of the Spring Boot Security course. In this episode we will begin to create a custom security configuration and we'll start with an HTTP basic authentication config. Now at first it's going to be something small but then you know as we have more episodes we'll um, continue to update our configuration class and in the end we'll have um, a complete configuration for HTTP basic authentication. Now, before we get started, I'd like to remind you to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel in order to stay tuned for more courses that will sharpen your programming skills. As we saw in the previous episode, the default configuration, while useful and powerful, uh, is not enough for real-world apps. So we need to create our own custom security configuration. And to do that, we need to create a new class. We'll create a new class, we'll call it uh, security configuration but you can call it however you want the name is not really important and <coughs> in this class we need to annotate it with configuration we need to annotate it with enable web security and this class also it extends the web uh, security configurer adapter so each time you want to create a custom configuration a custom security configuration class you need to keep these three things in mind so you need to extend you need to annotate it with add configuration add enable web security and then you need to extend the web security configurer adapter okay cool now that we have our class um, we need to think about what we want uh, our security how we want our security to behave and in this simple example, I thought about, you know, creating two users, you know, an admin user and a different user called Dan. Uh, we'll have to provide them a username and password. And then we'll configure HTTP basic for all the requests and see how our application is, is behaving. Okay, so let's do that. Um, now, in order to do that, we need to override some methods in here. And the first method that we're going to override is this one it's a configure method that has an authentication manager builder parameter okay and we can say something like this so we will use in-memory authentication at first now uh, this uh, in-memory authentication means that the username and password the you know users for our app along with their passwords roles etc will be stored in memory each time our application is started now, in future episodes, you'll configure them to use a database and certainly in, for production apps, you can have multiple data sources to choose from. But, you know, just to keep it simple, at first we will use in-memory authentication. And now let's define our user. So we'll say with user admin and this user has a password, let's say admin123 and let's give him a role of admin. And let's create another user and this time I want to create a user called Dan and the password is going to be Dan123 and you know he will have a user role okay and with these four lines of code I have created two users admin and Dan with passwords and roles and I have configured my application to use in-memory authentication okay but this is not enough uh, just uh, because we have you know defined users doesn't mean that our application is now secure so we kind of need to protect the resources that this application exposes in our case you know the views and the rest templates so for that we need to override another method called configure but this time this method receives an http security parameter. so the name is the same but the parameters differ and we can use this second method for example to authorize requests okay and I want to authorize all the requests so it doesn't matter if the user is trying to access a view or a public REST API or what view he accesses and I want to allow access just to the authenticated users and I also want to use the HTTP basic authentication okay so this looks like a uh, you know a simple security configuration that you will use in our application and no matter what configuration you use the structure is always the same so we have 
uh, to configure methods, the first one is to define a data source for your users and the second one is to authorize requests. And right now we have a very simple uh, configuration, we just say that uh, it doesn't matter what request the user makes, he needs to be authenticated first in order to access it and then we want to use HTTP authentication uh, for that purpose. But you know, in future episodes we'll refine this configuration and we'll add more and more features. But this is how a simple configuration looks like, a custom configuration and as you saw it's really pretty easy to use. Now let's start our app and see the outcome. Okay, the application started. I'll fire up an anonymous tab, localhost 8082. And now, because you configured our app to use HTTP basic authentication, we now have this browser pop up requesting us to enter a username and password. Okay, if you remember back to a previous episode, we discussed about HTTP authentication. Basically, the browser provides this login pop up, we provide the credentials, and then if that's successful, um, we are allowed to see that resource. And let's try this with Dan, Dan123. Hit sign in and it doesn't work and we can have admin, admin123, click sign in and it still doesn't work. And let's take a look at the errors and we see something like password encoder map to ID null. And if you're, you know, if you played with Spring Security in the past, then, you know, this was everything that you need to do to configure uh, security for, example, for this example. But now uh, we also need to provide a password encoder. Now a password encoder uh, is something used to hash your passwords when they are stored. So if you define your users with your passwords, the passwords will not be stored in plain text. And it doesn't matter if you use an in-memory in authentication or if you use a database authentication, it's always a good idea to use a password encoder. And in this version of Spring Boot, it's actually mandatory to define one. So we have to create, you know, uh, we have to create um, a bean and it's going to be password encoder. Okay. And now we will return new, I think it's, we'll use the bcrypt password encoder, which is a pretty safe one. And now let's try to run our application again and see if that did the trick. Okay, you can hit then, then one to three, sign in, and it still doesn't work. Now, if you look here, we no longer have uh, the error that we had before. So it's clearly not because our encoder is not defined, but we actually need to use this encoder when defining our um, passwords. So what we actually need to do is we need to actually use the password encoder to encode the passwords that we're using here. And by doing this, uh, you know, our passwords are encoded even if we use the in-memory authentication. So you can say password encoder, encode. Okay, and now we'll fire up our application again. Okay, localhost 882, I'll hit then, then one to three, sign in. And this time, okay, we are able to access our application and we are able to access the resources in here. Cool, so this is a pretty basic example of a custom configuration using basic authentication. Uh, do remember that starting with Spring Boot 2, you need to provide a password encoder and you also need to encode, you know, you also need to use it to encode your passwords. But other than that, you know, we just have like, I think, 20 lines of code for, you know, this kind of custom security configuration. So it's not that difficult to get up and started with Spring Security. Uh, now, in the future episode, we'll try to um, refine this access because right now uh, it doesn't matter if you're an admin or if you are a 
uh, standard user you can access all the views and all the resources and what we want to do is we want to provide a finer level of granularity when it comes to you know authorizing requests for example you might want the admin to be the only user to access you know the admin page or you might want the default page to be accessible by everybody but then the profile page and the rest of the pages to be accessible by you know an authenticated user so this kind of granular access rules um, you know are definitely used in real world apps and in the future video we'll see how to configure them before we close i would like to remind you to subscribe to this channel and stay tuned for more software development tutorials that will sharpen your programming skills just go to the romanian coder youtube page and click on the subscribe button also if you found this video useful please hit the like button and share it with your friends if you have any comments thoughts or ideas for new courses just put them in the comment section at the end of this video because i would love to get feedback from you guys you can also find me on twitter at romanian coder and you can also check out my blog www.romaniancoder.com until next time have a great day and write amazing code goodbye